To introduce you to entry-level CNC milling skills, in this series we'll walk you through using a ShopBot desktop to make every size of Apple Box. We'll start with the 8-inch Apple Box full and work our way down, introducing new concepts as we go. For material, we're going to use plywood scraps at different thicknesses. We'll start by making the top and the bottom using half-inch ply. Now in actuality, the sheet is giving the average thickness readings of 0.48 inches thick. Next, we fire up the Vectric CAD software that comes with the ShopBot. We create a new drawing file and get this job setup window. And by default, I've got the job size set to 24 by 18 inches, which corresponds with the machine's bed size. Under Material, we'll enter the material's thickness and indicate whether we're going to zero the bit to the top or the bottom of the material. That way, the machine knows precisely how deep to plunge the bit. In this case, we're zeroing to the bottom of the material, which is to say, the top of the spoil board. XY datum position has our 0, 0 set to the lower left corner, that's fine. And for units, we'll stick with inches. Now we draw the parts up. Vectric's got some great tutorials on the website for how to use all of the program's drawing tools, so we won't double up on that here. To cut our pieces out, we'll use a quarter inch upcut spiral bit. And don't worry, in later videos, we'll get into why you choose certain bits for certain applications. Here, I install and zero the bit, as demonstrated in an earlier video. Next, we mount our workpiece. Now, with CNC milling, holding the work down securely is crucial because we have a bit that's spinning at thousands of RPMs and plunging into the material. So the most basic hold down method is to simply screw your piece into the spoil board. Here, I'm using some self-tapping Craig screws. And of course, we ensure our screws are located such that the bit is not going to run into them. This is where the spoil board grid comes in handy. Now we'll set up the toolpath in the drawing file. To do this, we select the outline of our part and choose what's called a profile toolpath. That simply means the bit will travel along that outline that we selected. We can choose to have the bit cut inside the lines, outside of the lines, or directly on the lines. In this case, we're going to be cutting outside of the lines. Then we tell the machine which bit we're using by selecting it from the tool database built into the software. And we set the cutting depth. Finally, we name our toolpath, then hit calculate. The software lets you preview the cut you're about to make. Now here's the thing, we just talked about the importance of hold down, and we can see here in this preview that once this piece is cut out of the middle of our material, there's nothing holding it to the machine's bed. And if that piece moves as it's being cut free, it could jam the bit up, or if it was a smaller piece, the bit might pick it up and shoot it around. Obviously we don't want that. That's why there's this tabs feature built into the software. And we can choose to add tabs to the toolpath and place them wherever we'd like them. Now let's recalculate the toolpath and preview it again. So here we can see we've got our part surrounded by enough of these tabs to hold it in place during the machining operation. So now it's go time. We set the spindle to the correct speed for cutting this material. Then we export the toolpath into a cutting file that the machine can read, and we advance through these dialog boxes to give the machine the OK. And it cuts the part out. I've left the dust foot off here for visual clarity. Had we left the dust foot on, there wouldn't be nearly this much sawdust and chips. Here I'll vacuum them out so that you can see better. Now we can see it's cut out everything except the tabs but these top edges are still square, and what we want in a finished apple box are rounded edges. So next we'll switch to a point round over bit. This time it's more convenient to zero the z-axis to the top of the material, since the workpiece is already mounted, so that's what we're going to do. And we'll be sure to change that zeroing indication in the drawing file itself. Creating the cutting file for the round over is similar to the first one we did. We select that same outline in the drawing, and then click on the profile toolpath. However, this time we want the bit to cut directly on the line we've drawn, not to the outside of it. And of course, we have to tell the machine that we've changed the bit, so we select it from the bit database. In this case, we're using a bit with a 1 8 inch radius. Lastly, we need to set our desired depth of cut. Then we name our toolpath, hit calculate, 
and preview the cut to be sure it's giving us what we want. This looks pretty good. The spindle speed required for this bit is identical to the last bits, so we can leave that be. Now we export our new cutting file to the machine and let the machine do its thing. Next, we remove the mounting screws. Now, our piece is still held in place with these tabs. So to break the part out, I've seen people use a utility knife, a chisel, or a saw. I use pruning shears. To get rid of the tabs altogether, most folks use a sanding machine. I don't have one, so I'll just knock the tabs down with a file. And there we have the finished top. Now we actually need two of these, but I'll cut the second one off camera. Stay tuned for the next episodes where we'll cut the sides and faces and introduce a couple of new concepts.